You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. of positive planetary change with your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. Listen as Aurora brings good news to an awakening world and sacred healing using powerful and transformational tools. So now, please welcome the host of The Oracle, Dr. Aurora Ariel. Aloha and welcome to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. I'm your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel, and we're broadcasting live across the planet on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Today, I'm excited to continue unveiling the amazing time we are in and its portents for our future to bring you the good news of what's taking place on planet Earth today. If you've been daunted by what is going on, stay tuned as there are many glorious things happening and that is what this show is all about, to help you see the whole picture and why we are moving into a more enlightened future despite the dire potentials we are facing. The title of our show today is The Violet People, the new planetary culture that is transforming our future. I'll be joined by Wilk Wilkinson, a prolific writer, visionary and humanitarian. We'll be discussing the Violet signature, the mission the Violets are here to fulfill, and how the planet will never be the same. And he's got some key insights from his own work and a lifetime of spiritual quest and having his finger on the pulse of planetary happenings. So it should be a pretty exciting show. So who are the Violet people and why are they so important to our present planetary equation? I began introducing them in the last show, and what I can say about them is they are truly a phenomenon of our time, and if they were not here, I don't think we would have the potential to realize a more enlightened future that I believe is within the range of possibility. The very fact that we have so many people today that care about the planet, that are undergoing a transfiguration, a personal transformation that are working to better their lives and the lives of others and who care about the future of the planet is quite unprecedented. For in the past, we might have seen a sage, an activist, and then people rallying around them, and this in small numbers. Today, there are millions of violets on the planet today who are undergoing an almost incomprehensible awakening that is changing life on Earth. And because they are here, the future is not going to be the same future that many are predicting and many are really in fear of. And so this is one of the most important topics I speak to in my Earth 2012 to 33 books because it's very important for us to understand that we're not alone here, that we're not a stranger in a strange world and there's no one really like us and that all the world's going to hell. There is so much that is happening through this awakening today and primarily through the violets who are the front runner souls who came to earth to do this mission, to bring the world out of the range of disasters and and avert the dire potentials to take us into a better future. And we have great numbers. There are so many things taking place, up-leveling 
all kinds of things in our society for every kind of person and bringing beneficence to our world. And this has launched a global renaissance and we've never seen that before on this planet. We've never seen quite the immensity of change, transformation, awakening, enlightenment going on. And the very fact that the world is filled with mystics undergoing this process is quite quite incredible. So when you keep your finger on the pulse of this side of our planetary equation, it's easy to be at peace and to know that we're all doing our part and we're making a really great change on Earth. We are doing it together and it is taking all of us together. And so I know Will will have some important keys for us on how we can better do that and be that in this world, that presence in this world that is making a difference. One of the most amazing things about this soul group is that they were prophesied before this time by each of the Indian nations individually, the American Indian nations. Indian elders saw that a time of great darkness was coming, when the airs, waters, and lands would be polluted and where wars and strife would be devastating people's lives across the planet. At that time, they prophesied that souls would be born throughout the world into every nation and background who they called the warriors of the rainbow because they would be multicultural, that they would come at the time of the greatest darkness of earth to turn the tide and that they would be the teachers, the healers, the way showers. And not only that, they would honor the indigenous ways. And we're seeing that today. And we're seeing a group of people that are very universal in their thinking and their way of being, that they have adopted a way of life and being that is really beyond the structures and the archaic systems of this world when they arrived. They are more spiritually uh, based, have more of a personal experience that they want, in their spirituality and their awakening rather than kind of the rote traditions of religion. They want to know truth for themselves. They want to be all they can be and they want to fulfill their mission. So they're very mission oriented. They're very focused on destiny and making a positive change in the earth. I call them the violet people because they are so focused on personal and planetary transformation, and that is very violet ray. The violet ray, as we know, it is a high vibrational frequency of transmutation and positive change that's even being used medically these days of, and is of great beneficence. I believe violet people are the hidden hand in our planet's destiny. As I've delved deeply into these extraordinary souls in our present planetary equation, I have really seen that we do have a chance, that the future can be bright. And I've seen this future with my own eyes, with visions, in a hypnosis journey into the future. And as I've worked with countless souls across the planet, I see that they are encoded with this vision of a transformed future. They are here to bring in that future. It's an amazing destiny coding, and it's quite exciting. So I'd like to share a vision of great import to the world that I had in my early years of awakening in my teens. I saw the earth shudder. Darkness had begun to cover the land. Portents of a sorrowful future revealed itself to many. Humanity stood on the brink of a disastrous age, overwhelmed and unprepared, but the heavens had not yet played their last hand. Key souls had embodied throughout the earth in every nation and peoples. They filled positions in every important area in life, but they were hidden, shrouded by dark cloaks, a reflection of the human patterning they had taken on. They blended with the rest of humanity while within them a silent awakening was taking place. Now, I've just gotten the cue that we're going to break, and I guess I will share more about this when we get back, so stay tuned. This is Aurora Juliana Ariel on the Oracle, A Voice of Positive Planetary Change. 
and we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story, is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Aloha, everyone. I'm Aurora Juliana Ariel, and you're listening to the Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. We're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Really excited to have you all today, and my guest, Will Wilkinson, who I will be introducing momentarily. In the last segment, I was sharing about this amazing vision I had that I feel is of great importance to the world because it speaks about the Violet people and what they're doing exactly, that they took on the same human patterns as the slower evolving humanity that that they were coming to assist and that through the transfiguration, the healing and transformation of these patterns, they were going through an awakening process, coming back to their true identities. And in that moment, a great happening takes place. So I'm going to take off a little bit where I was uh, speaking to in the vision, and then we'll be introducing Will, and we're going to rock and roll with this topic. All right, so I left off by... They were shrouded by dark cloaks, a reflection of the human patterning they had taken on. They blended with the rest of humanity, while within them a silent awakening was taking place. They were unraveling the patterns of an ancient past and awakening to their true identity. A clarion voice called out into the night. A light flashed through the skies, and without warning, they emerged from underneath their dark shrouds and stood illumined and powerful throughout the earth. Their wisdom, skills, and knowledge poured forth into their respective areas of service, catalyzing world change. In the twinkling of an eye, the world was transformed. The reign of darkness had ended. It was the beginning of an age of light. Now, it was visions like this and memories of being right before this life that really keyed me into the significance of this time and how important it has been for all of us to align with our true missions and to be undergoing this awakening process so that we can bring our greatest gifts 
and our expertise and skills to the present planetary equation. We know there's many dire potentials yet to overcome. We're not out of it yet. And so it really is a time for all of us to be wise, stay in our authentic selves most often, and really bring love into the field. So it's really a great joy for me to introduce my guest, Will Wilkinson. We go way back. And this show today is a reunion after many years. So we knew each other on the beautiful island of Maui. And it was quite a glorious relationship with he and his wife and my beloved and I, because we were all exemplifying that beloved relationship. But if this was February, we'd be talking to soulmates, twin flames. But today we're talking about the awakening. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Will is a senior consultant with Luminary Communications in Ashland, Oregon. He's a very prolific writer. He has written eight books, and I'm sure more are on their way. And he has delivered holistic education programs for over 30 years in six countries. This is a dedicated soul. And what I know of him personally is he just is a high conscious man of quite, quite extraordinary, quite rare. And always when you see this in, in our world, it's so inspiring and it helps us all to raise up and be our best selves. His new book, Now or Never, champions individual heroics in contributing to global transmission. He has many offerings and information on his website at willtwilkinson.com and also the Academy of Natural Wisdom.com. So welcome, Will. It's a great joy to have you on the show today. Well, thank you, Aurora. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're coming in loud and clear. Great. Well, thanks for the invitation, and wonderful to hear your introduction. Thank you so much for what you're doing, and for listeners, what everyone is doing in their own way. I love bringing the good news to humanity because I see it all, the good, bad, and the ugly, and I'm highly educated on everything since my teens. However, I feel so blessed to see this great happening that I speak to, and I like to share about it because sometimes people really go under the weight of planetary conditions, personal challenges, and then the news certainly doesn't help. And so, you know, it really is important that we see the whole picture and then we can stay in a more positive mindset. Well, you're absolutely right, and apparently, according to researchers, we have about 60,000 thoughts every day, and 85% of them are just repeating the same thoughts we had yesterday, and 90% of them are negative. So, you know, we're swimming in negativity, and it takes being deliberate and having support from people like you, shows like this, not just to keep our heads above the water, but to swim and to make some headway. Yeah, and it's it's challenging when we have these human programs running. And in my work, my pioneering work in the psyche over many years, I found that all of the ills of humanity is really coming out of the psyche, that these subconscious aspects are holding the traumas of our past, false sense of identity, belief systems, and they're the ones that run the negativity. So I found one essential key, alchemical key that I give is we need to be addressing these parts of ourselves because they're running almost be behind our conscious awareness. Like we might think we're moving along positively, but maybe we're not listening to our thoughts. Maybe we're not really in touch with our feelings. And so this is one of the keys I found in how I like to live in more of that high conscious joyous place is I seriously address any of these things that come up and I do it quickly with the process I've given to the world in the quest. So you've had an amazing, incredible life and I want to hear more about how you've learned to traverse the challenges in this material world and we'll get back to that right after this next break. So I'm 
Thank you all for listening, and we're going to get into this delving deeply into it when we get back. This is Aurora Juliana Ariel on The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change, and we're broadcasting live across the planet today on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. More about the violets and this exciting time we're in and some practical tools for you as well. Stay tuned. Have you been dreaming of that ideal getaway? A sacred adventure where you are completely restored and renewed. Join Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel for her Mastery Intensive Red Rock Adventure in Sedona in May or the Oracle Sacred Destiny Cruise through the ancient temples of Italy, Greece, and Turkey in September. Want to know what to expect in the coming times? Read her award-winning Earth 2012-33 to books. Sign up for her newsletter to stay abreast of all her offerings, healing specials, Earth 2012-33 to updates, insights from the Oracle, secrets of eternal youth, and more at aurorajulianaariel.com. Ready to realize a greater potential? Experience her 33-day self-actualization programs, healing music for an awakening world, or healing activations available under products. Ready for a total life transformation? Sign up for her one-year program. Want a distance healing from Aurora? Check out her virtual healing center with its wide array of healing modalities and skilled healers under Healing Menu at sacredalchemy.com. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. You're listening to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change, and we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We've begun to delve a little bit more deeply into the Violet people, this great awakening taking place on Earth, and some of the dilemmas. And Will has such incredible insights into this. So, Will, you are unusual that you've always walked a transformational path and as you mentioned in your book now or never your challenge has been to learn how to live in this material world can you share a bit about those challenges sure um well uh, fortunately i was a jock and that helped because the strange ideas i had as a child were kind of mitigated by the fact that i was really a good hockey player i grew up in canada and a tennis player so I could kind of keep my cover intact, that I was actually a spiritual being learning how to live in this material world with some difficulty. However, um, I survived and over the years have been able to find a lot more people like me. I think you're referring to us all as violet people. And especially in the last decade or so, I've become very hopeful that folks like us are really starting to focus in I like to say that we were born with the cards we're dealt. That's fate. But how we play them is our destiny. And choice figures into that very powerfully. So my role has been to help people make the choices that can help them unbundle their gifts, give what they're here to give, and contribute to the awakening of the species. How have you been doing that? Well, I'm very creative, so I've written a lot of books. I mean, I have eight of my own in print, but I've been a ghostwriter and a collaborative writer and have worked with a whole range of spiritual teachers over the years. And here in Ashland, it's kind of a cornucopia of spiritual teachers. Uh, Gungaji lives here, Neil Donald Walsh, Gary Zukov, the list goes on and on. So, you know, we have an in-person community, a lot of support for each other to help others walking our talk. I think I want to list that as the first thing, because if there's a takeaway for our listeners 
at least from me, it's that we do need to walk our talk. And whether you're a teacher, a plumber, a mother, a dentist, the real impact we have are the values we're expressing in our life. We, we don't all need to, to quit our day jobs and become prophets on a hill. We do it from the inside, inside the system we live in. We're kind of like uh, Trojan horses, you know, how there was something inside. Well, what's inside me is my values that I transmit through making lunch for my wife, through shoveling snow here in this long winter, or giving a talk, speaking with you right now. They're just different avenues to transmit the value that I bring into the world. I can't underline that enough because... A lot of people feel that they're inadequate. They're not doing their job if they don't have some high-profile position. Nothing could be further from the truth. We all do what we can with who we are in the present moment. That's so beautiful. It really is just being that loving presence and radiating that out to all. And as we stay in what I call our authentic selves most often, then everything else flows naturally. We might be a mother and, you know, we're helping the community because we're loving, we're caring, we're compassionate, and that light in our soul radiates out. I think the most important thing I've learned personally is that it's not so much the projects and beautiful products and offerings that are going to make the biggest change on earth. It's really the consciousness shift and being in that, yeah, being in that higher consciousness. Absolutely. And the, the thing that's different today, I mean, it's always been here in the background, but today it's an urgent priority, is that we're living in a world where there's a lot of predictive scenarios that are very dark. Um, for my last book, Now or Never, I did a lot of research And I found that since 1950, there's been about 182 science fiction films, all of which were dystopian. In other words, the future that's being forecast is, to say the least, glum. But if you look at last year's Oscars, Mad Max, I think, won five Oscars, and it's a total dystopian future. So, and by the way, I could only find one film listed that predicted a positive future, and that was 2001. (laughs) I think I'd add 2011, 2010 as well. But it's up to us to create positive visions of the future and energize those. And we need support to do that because we're living, as I said, in a sea of negativity. And they say what you fear comes upon you. Well, there's a whole lot of fear right now about the future. I'm not talking about going into denial and ignoring the very real threats we face. But I am saying we also need to use our imaginations proactively to begin fabricating positive futures that we can then manifest. It's so important, really. And it is so true that our beliefs and programs and way of life all have such an impact on us and everyone around us. And one of the most important and shocking things I found in my research directly into the psyche is that these programs that humanity has been running, they're like living wills, willing in dire things. And they're behind everything that we're dealing with from illness, relationship challenges, financial issues. So as I've traced these things with different people and lots of people across the planet, what I always come to is this causal level that it's programmed in. It's like we took it on from generations past and everybody's been living out of these programs. And like you said, we're dealt, you know, our cards when we come in. I think what that means to me is we take on some of the these patterns and beliefs from our generational past of the lines we're being born into and now they're running. And absolutely, so- absolutely. And, and one word that I learned recently to describe this, it's a Cree, a Native American word, Wateko, which means mind virus. And indigenous people felt that white man's disease was an actual mind virus that disconnected them from the web of life. And look at the destructiveness that's resulted from that. So we need to reconnect. 
Yeah, reconnect with source, be our true authentic selves, and heal and transform these patterns for the last time. It's funny that you say that word because I always say we have this virus in our in our mind, our computer system, and the human computer system that needs to be eradicated. All right, we're going to break, and then we're going to be back and keep going with this incredible topic. I'm Aurora Juliana Ariel. You're listening to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change, and we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Have you been dreaming of that ideal getaway? A sacred adventure where you are completely restored and renewed. Join Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel for her Mastery Intensive Red Rock Adventure in Sedona in May or the Oracle Sacred Destiny Cruise through the ancient temples of Italy, Greece, and Turkey in September. Want to know what to expect in the coming times? Read her award-winning Earth 2012-33 to books. Sign up for her newsletter to stay abreast of all her offerings, healing specials, Earth 2012-33 to updates, insights from the Oracle, secrets of eternal youth, and more at AuroraJulianaAriel.com. Ready to realize a greater potential? Experience her 33-day self-actualization programs, healing music for an awakening world, or healing activations available under products. Ready for a total life transformation? Sign up for her one-year program. Want a distance healing from Aurora? Check out her virtual healing center with its wide array of healing modalities and skilled healers under Healing Menu at sacredalchemy.com. Okay, we're back. You're listening to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. I'm your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. We have a great guest with us today, Will Wilkinson, and we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So where we left off is the importance of understanding that many people on this planet are running negative programs and that when we embodied and when the, even when the violets came into embodiment these programs started running that they picked up from their family lineages so this has created what i found is a fate a fate that's dictated by human programs rather than a higher destiny being fulfilled. And that's why we've seen forever, millennia upon millennia, of people never really actualizing their full potential or fulfilling a higher destiny. Mostly you're just seeing people, especially as we arrived here on Earth, people were have been living for so long out of the human programs that the true self, the divine self, was way up a crystal cord that only some could find once in a while to get a little inspiration. Today, we're challenged to embody the truth of who we are. we got to bring that divine self into our physical world, into our beings. And to do that, we got to clean up these programs in our psyche and make room for us to truly be the living presence, that indwelling spirit, and manifest its glory in our world. And that's how we're going to have an amazing future. So, Will, you said that the only hope for surviving the many threats facing humanity today is to focus transformational power of love and compassion and forgiveness into every moment. And I know you have an amazing process you give in your Now or Never book. Can you run us by that so people today can take away some tools of helping themselves deal with this challenge? Well, I'd be delighted to, and you're absolutely right. Our only hope is to focus a transmission that can actually transform the species and the way we live on the planet, the way we live with each other, the way we live with all other species. You know, I do some building and I'm familiar with the difference between renovating and starting over. We're beyond renovation. There's something really dramatic that needs to shift. So I also know that it's um, frustrating for people to hear a big vision when they don't get tips for how to actualize it in their lives. So I'm really into empowering people with simple techniques that are easy to do. So the one I'd like to run through right now is called streaming. It's a four-part process, and I think what I'll do is I'll maybe use you um, as an example, Aurora, if you're willing, because it's easier to do it in a couple of minutes than to talk about it. Are are you willing to be the subject here? Uh, Yes, open and willing. 
Okay, great. So what's something just in a couple of words that you would like to see uh, happen in the world, something you would like to achieve? To achieve personally or see happening in the world? Let's let's start with something personal just to keep it a little smaller because we can use this at any scale, but to make it manageable for starters, just something you'd like to achieve in your personal life. Okay. Uh, right now, as I tune in, I just can really share how happy and blessed I feel and how abundant my life is because I did find a way to live in my authentic self most of the time. And then when issues come up and the programs are running, I very quickly use my sacred alchemy process and I transform it and I come back to who I am. And so I find that as I'm being my authentic self in the high high 90s percentile of the time and have I have very little downtime and suffering or misery and I'm able to change things very fast that are you know calamities or dire things appearing so what more would a girl with everything want Let's shift okay. gears a little bit. It's a little unfair for me to ask you to do this without any prep. So I'm just going to give you an example because I'd like readers to, or listeners, I'm so used to writing, <laughs> listeners to follow along with the process fairly quickly because we don't have too much time. So using um, myself as an example, um, last week, Thursday morning, I went out to get some firewood, slipped on the ice, and broke several bones in my back. I went to the emergency uh, room uh, in the ambulance. Doctors gave me drugs, gave me a CAT scan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, obviously, what I wanted in that situation was to heal my body. Okay, so when I was in the ambulance, laying there in agony, and not knowing what kind of shape my body was in, I constructed a vision, which is the first step of my process. My vision was: I see myself driving home from the hospital with my wife, smiling, happy knowing that there's no permanent damage to my body, that I'll heal quickly and all will be well. So that was my vision. That was my first step in this process. The second step is to get really honest about the way things are. So then I went, well, I don't know if my back is totally broken, if I'm not going to be able to walk. I could be a cripple. And I got into the feelings of that, and I really felt how awful that would be. So that was number two, facing the facts. Number three was asking for help. I need help. I can't heal on my own. I need the help of spirit. I need the help of doctors, friends, family, etc. Final step is taking action. So what action did I take? I reached out to my chiropractor friend, Dr. John, and got a back brace from him, which has been immensely helpful. I've done, you know, 60 other things, but in this formula, I encourage clients to pick one little simple thing to do. So the result was that I was driving home from the hospital about four or five hours later, feeling exactly what I envisioned, that I'd be healing, my body would be fine, no long-term impediments, etc. I got all the help I needed, and I'm taking actions every day, and I'd say I'm back about 90%. So that's the streaming process, four steps. Create a vision for what you want, face the facts of the way things are, ask for help, and then take action. I love it. I definitely want to try it. So this is exciting, Will, because it's so fast and it sounds very effective. Well, it is, and clients tell me it works, and uh, we can talk more about it after your break. But I'm interested in practicality. To me, if you can't do something that really works, why bother? All right, well, we're going to be keeping going with this amazing conversation and this insights from this incredible man. And so I am Aurora Juliana Ariel. You're listening to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. And we're broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Have you been dreaming of that ideal getaway? A sacred adventure where you are completely restored and renewed. Join Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel for her Mastery Intensive Red Rock Adventure in Sedona in May or the Oracle Sacred Destiny Cruise through the ancient temples of Italy, Greece, and Turkey in September. Want to know what to expect in the coming times? Read her award-winning Earth 2012-33 to books. Sign up for her newsletter to stay abreast of all her offerings, healing specials, Earth 2012-33 to updates, insights from the Oracle, secrets of eternal youth, and more at aurorajulianaariel.com. 
Ready to realize a greater potential? Experience her 33-day self-actualization programs, healing music for an awakening world, or healing activations available under products. Ready for a total life transformation? Sign up for her one-year program. Want a distance healing from Aurora? Check out her virtual healing center with its wide array of healing modalities and skilled healers under Healing Menu at sacredalchemy.com. Welcome back to the Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. I'm your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel, and we're broadcasting live across the planet on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, Will just gave us a fantastic process called streaming, and I love it. I'm going to be trying it right after the show, and I hope all of you will, too, and get his book. That sounds like it's just filled with so many helpful things, now or never. So, Will, you offer personal mentoring through a program called Living on Purpose, and you were mentioning also that... Uh, in between on our break that you love to work with the power of imagination and helping people. So I would love to hear more about that. Yes, uh, I use imagination all the time in my work. We all use it all the time in our lives. The core of that word is image. And just think of all the images we we use, not really knowing it, we'll say something like, oh, I feel like I've got the weight of the world on my back. You know, or I feel like I'm wading through quicksand, or I'm on top of the world. So we use imagery, but we've not been taught how to use it proactively to create our future. And that's what I help my clients do. You know, Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And I agree with that, because you can use imagination to apply knowledge. There's a lot of very knowledgeable people with no imagination, and their knowledge doesn't, doesn't do them any good. So, for instance, one way I help people use their imagination and grow their what I call their imaginal muscles is to come up with an image for their life. And it's kind of a before and after thing because we start with an image for their life right now. And I'd invite our listeners to, to think about that for a minute. What is an image that would represent your life right now? So once somebody has done that, then I say, okay, what would be an image for your ideal life? And initially, it takes a little while to learn how to do that. Once you get the habit of it, you can do it very quickly for anything. You know, an image for your marriage, an image for your work, an image for the world, you know, a future scenario. So when I did this at the beginning of 2016 myself, the image I came up with for my life was a rocket on the launch pad, but very quiet. It was just sitting there, kind of inert. Throughout the years, I've checked back on that image, it's changed. People, workmen, hoses blasting steam, smoke coming out, the roar of engines. In other words, beginning to get ready for liftoff. Around June, the rocket lifted off. So at that point, the image for my life was a rocket in flight. And right now, we're nearing escaping gravity, which heads into freefall follow that evolution there. So in other words, it's a living image. And if a person can learn to use their imagination like that relative to every part of their life, it changes everything. I love it. Wow, powerful. You really have some powerful pieces to this puzzle. You're well, thank you, Aurora. Doing... Thank you, Aurora. And, and I like your use of the word puzzle. Um, yeah, that, that just slipped out of your mouth, but I think that was very profound. Life is a game. Life is a game, yes. and we were never taught the rules. We never were given the secrets for how to live life properly. And one of the biggest, I believe, is to proactively use the imagination to create visions of the future. In the subtitle of my book, the book is called Now or Never, the subtitle is A Time Traveler's Guide to Personal and Global Transformation. So with the streaming technique we just walked through, you travel into the future and create a, an attractor. In quantum physics, they call it a strange attractor that actually pulls us towards the future that we want. We can also stream back into the past, use our imagination to connect with the trauma 
and identify the qualities that were missing and bring them in from the future to change that memory. I'm sure you know a lot about that as a therapist. So in other words, we're not limited. We're not limited beings. We live both in linear time, which is past, present, future, sequentially, and what's called deep time, which is past, present, and future simultaneously in this present moment. And when we develop the tools, the skills to travel forward and backwards and bring the qualities that are necessary, we can heal and we can create. This is beautiful. You're starting your own podcast soon, and you said that you ask your guests three questions. What do you (laughs) think is really going on in the world? Secondly, what are you doing about it? And finally, what do you recommend that our listeners do about it? And you've described yourself as an optimist who has become more of a realist. So I want to see what does that mean relative to the state of the world today? What's your current prediction about our future? We've heard a bit of what you're doing for the world and how you're making a difference. And it's quite an amazing offering. I just feel so grateful to know you. In a nutshell, I guess, because we're coming to break, I'd love to hear, what's your prediction about our future? Well, it's a a rebirth. Humanity is rebirthing, and anyone who's had a child or been present when a child was born knows that birth is dangerous. It's painful, it's messy, and there's a lot of risk. So that's where we are right now, and that's what it looks like. But if you can imagine someone who had no understanding of the birthing process, and they were in the middle of this, what looked like a medical emergency, they'd be very pessimistic. They'd be frightened and fearful. They wouldn't know what was going on. Someone who's had experience of birth goes, well, yeah, it is kind of risky, but you know, this is called birth, and a child will be born, and something magnificent will grow. That's where we are right now. And so Mm -hmm. I am both a realist and an optimist. I'm an optimist because I know a birth is happening. It's going to be magnificent. I'm a realist because I know birth is dangerous and there are threats and we need to be very, very careful. But ultimately, I focus on the birth and I do what I can to assist individuals who, I think you also asked, what, what should we be doing? Individuals who are transmitting their own transformative values and to look to the future and say, you know what, this is going to be great. Yes, keep that high vision. Well, everything you've spoken to today, I completely am in resonance with. And I am so grateful that you came on the show. You've been an incredible inspiration. So thank you so much. Everyone, please check out Will's offerings at willtwilkinson.com, W-I-L-K-I-N-S-O-N. Dot com, And we're going to be right back for our final segment. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about seeing if you are a violet soul. So I'm Aurora Juliana Ariel, broadcasting live on BBN Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And you've been listening to the Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. Stay tuned. Have you been dreaming of that ideal getaway? A sacred adventure where you are completely restored and renewed. Join Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel for her Mastery Intensive Red Rock Adventure in Sedona in May or the Oracle Sacred Destiny Cruise through the ancient temples of Italy, Greece, and Turkey in September. Want to know what to expect in the coming times? Read her award-winning Earth 2012-33 to books. Sign up for her newsletter to stay abreast of all her offerings, healing specials, Earth 2012-33 to updates, insights from the Oracle, secrets of eternal youth, and more at aurorajulianaariel.com. Ready to realize a greater potential? Experience her 33-day self-actualization programs, healing music for an awakening world, or healing activations available under products. Ready for a total life transformation? Sign up for her one-year program. Want a distance healing from Aurora? Check out her virtual healing center with its wide array of healing modalities and skilled healers under Healing Menu at sacredalchemy.com. Aloha, everyone. You've been listening to The Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change, and we've been broadcasting live on global BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel, and I feel so absolutely inspired by everything that Will brought us in the conversation today. It's so amazing. 
uh, the tools that he's developed that are helping so many people. So I hope you'll link up with him and avail yourself of all the great offerings. So I wanted to complete today with seeing if you are a violet person. And so listen to these qualities and the more of them that you have, the more likely it is that you are a violet. Of course, that you'd even be interested in my show means pretty much you would be a violet. So anyways, here goes the qualities. You feel like you have a mission in life. You have a vision for your life and dreams you want to fulfill. You are troubled by the conditions in the world and believe in peace, not war. You care about the planet, environment, animals, children, and our indigenous cultures. You like to help others. You are doing your part in creating a better world, supporting, volunteering, or assisting causes you believe in. You believe in being conscious, moral, ethical, honorable, honest, and fair. You strive to live with integrity, true to your ideals. You love nature and nature adventures. You have a special connection with animals or feel close to the nature kingdom. You explore foreign lands and other cultures or reading about them. You have an interest in ancient civilizations, histories, and getting your finger on the pulse of what's happening on the planet and what has happened here in historic times. You have traveled to or studied about exotic locations, ancient temples, pyramids, sacred sites, or or very fascinating historic sites. You are on a quest for truth. You seek to understand the deeper meaning of your life. Finding your sole purpose and fulfilling it is important to you. You have received counseling, coaching, psychotherapy, or worked with a shaman or medicine person to delve deeply into your psyche. You have traced your patterns back to childhood wounds and sought to heal and resolve them. You read books on self-help, personal growth, spirituality, and health, attend personal growth seminars, workshops, classes, and trainings. You use affirmations, set clear intentions, and or practice positive thinking. You are on a growing edge, ever seeking the next level of spiritual awareness and or personal awakening. You're into healing and health, healthy lifestyles and diets. You love to exercise, look your best, keep your body youthful and physically fit. You acquire wealth to sustain your family and empower your spiritual vision, humanitarian ideal or creative expression. But the acquisition of wealth in itself is not your driving force. You're serious about your spiritual growth and have tried different spiritual paths, enlightenment, freedom, and or peace or a life quest, self-actualization, a life path. You seek to know who you really are and realize your potential. You like to spend time by yourself. You need to retreat from the world periodically to have a time of inner reflection. Your beliefs are tolerant and usually universal. You are open to, have embraced, or have studied many paths, philosophies, and ways of life, creating your own unique plan. You have practiced or been interested in different spiritual techniques like meditation, yoga, tai chi, or martial arts. You have created a sacred space or altar in your home for meditation, healing, or reflection. Spiritual partnership or sacred relationship is important to you and you have studied, been interested in or trained in conscious relationship or sacred sexuality. You surround yourself with people who are interesting, creative and talented. And there's more and you can look that up in my first book in the Earth 2012 to 33 series, The Ultimate Quest. And in book two, Time of the Awakening Soul, you can read the 22 master signatures of the Violet Soul. Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you're enjoying the show. Please leave messages about your experience. And you've been listening to the Oracle, a voice of positive planetary change. I'm Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel, and we've been broadcasting live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. See you next week. This has been The Oracle with your host, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. Come join us and listen each week for conscious shifting and a deep and greater awareness on Dr. Aurora Ariel's The Oracle. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.